taking care of yourself at home. St. Mary's is the right place to be for joint replacement surgery. Since you won't be in the hospital for very long, we want to be sure that you have the information you need to continue progress at home. After you review the general information in this video, your nurse will provide specific instructions from your surgeon. So write down any questions that come to mind to be confident that you are prepared to leave the hospital safely. After you get settled in at home, you will need to call your surgeon's office to make your follow-up appointment. Your nurse will tell you the time frame to schedule that visit. If home health care has been ordered, you will be contacted by phone to schedule the first visit. If you have not received a phone call from them by noon on the day after your discharge, please call them. The name of the agency and the number will be on your discharge instructions. Your surgeon will prescribe pain medication and a blood thinner for you to take at home. To keep track of when you are taking medications, start a log with the time that you took them to be sure you are taking at the correct time intervals. Your nurse will review the side effects of your pain medication and blood thinner. Remember to contact your surgeon if you experience any problems with side effects. If you would like to have your prescriptions filled before you leave the hospital, you may use our outpatient pharmacy available Monday through Friday. Your nurse can send the prescriptions to the pharmacy and your coach will be given the paper prescriptions when they pick up the medicine and pay any comb payment if due. You may choose to take the prescriptions with you and have them filled at your own pharmacy. But if you are running low on narcotic pain medication and need a refill, contact your surgeon's office. Your pharmacy will not refill them by phone. You will need a paper prescription from your surgeon's office. Discomfort is a normal part of recovery. Multimodal pain management allows for more effective pain control with fewer side effects by combining narcotics or anti-inflammatories or Tylenol along with ice, elevation, and activity. Take pain medication as prescribed. Always take with meals or a snack and at least eight ounces of water. Take the pain medication before activity and at bedtime as needed. Remember it can take 30 to 45 minutes for medicine to decrease your pain. As you recover, you should decrease your narcotic pain medicine. Notify your surgeon if the pain medicine is causing side effects such as drowsiness, dizziness, upset stomach, or unrelieved constipation. Avoid alcohol during your recovery. It increases your risk of falling and interacts with other medications you may be taking. Your surgeon may prescribe an NSAID like Celebrex or Mobic for you to take in addition to your narcotic pain medicine. Tylenol taken regularly is also effective in managing pain and can help to minimize the use of narcotics. To decrease swelling and pain, use the gel ice wrap. You can use it at all times except when walking. Change the ice packs about every four hours and never apply the ice directly to your skin. The local anesthetics you receive during your surgery will wear off 24 to 48 hours afterwards. You may feel more pain at this time. Throughout this presentation, we will refer to red, yellow, and green zones. We will discuss what issues are a normal part of the recovery, the green zone, what symptoms need to be discussed with your surgeon or primary care doctor, yellow zone, and what symptoms require immediate medical attention, the red zone. After surgery, it is common to experience some degree of constipation. That is why we start giving you stool softeners in the hospital. When you go home, you need to continue to take something to manage constipation every day as long as you are taking narcotic pain medicine. But if you still don't have a bowel movement by the third or fourth day after surgery, you can't ignore the problem. You may need to add one of the over-the-counter medications listed on the handout that we provide, a fiber product like Miralax or even a Dulcolax suppository. As you become more active, you will move away from that narcotic pain medicine which causes constipation. Focus on a healthy diet with fresh fruits and vegetables. Pay attention to high fiber foods such as whole wheat bread, bran, and oatmeal. 
Don't forget at least eight cups of water every day. Management of constipation is a normal part of the green zone after surgery. If you have a brown waterproof dressing on your incision, it is to remain in place for seven days and then can be removed. You may shower with this dressing in place. Some drainage or fluid under the dressing is normal, but if it starts leaking out from under the dressing, call your surgeon. If your dressing becomes loose, replace it with a dry sterile gauze and change it daily. When your aquacell is removed, you may continue to shower, but no tub baths. On day seven after surgery, the dressing needs to be removed and the steps are simple. First, wash your hands. Then gently pull down on a corner with one hand and use the other hand to slowly lift up an edge. Stretch the edge down and out to break the seal. Slowly work around repeating the steps until the dressing is loose and can be removed. If you have a white gauze dressing on your incision, it needs to be changed daily until the drainage stops. You may begin showering once drainage stops. Get into the shower with the dressing in place. Afterward, remove the wet dressing and apply a new dressing and tape. Your nurse will show you how to change the dressing and provide supplies for home use. Please remember the importance of hand washing. Yellow is the caution zone. Call your surgeon if your incision continues to drain or has a foul odor, if the area around the incision is red and swollen, or if you have a fever of 101 or above that continues. Always take a shower when someone is at home who will be able to help you. Wait at least two hours after you have taken pain medication. Follow any surgeon's specific instructions. The Aquacell dressing is waterproof and you can shower with it in place. A shower bench or chair is not a requirement but can be helpful, especially if you have a tub shower. A long-handled sponge or handheld shower can help you reach your back and feet. Tub baths are restricted for six weeks, as well as getting into a pool or hot tub. Swelling and bruising are normal and to be expected, especially after knee replacement. Lie down and elevate your leg above the level of your heart for 30 minutes at least three times a day. Elevate the entire leg, thigh to ankle, with pillows, but don't put a pillow only behind your knee so that it is in a bent position. Continue to use ice, do your ankle pumps to decrease swelling and prevent blood clots. Yellow zone is the caution zone. If your swelling increases and does not improve with elevation or if the bruising increases, call your surgeon. If you are wearing white compression stockings, you will wear them until you see your surgeon for follow-up. Remove the stockings daily for one hour to shower and then reapply. It is important to smooth out all the wrinkles and pull them up over your thighs. Your coach may want to wear gloves to help with putting them on. During your recovery, it is important to manage your overall health and prevent complications. Smoking can affect health and increases your risk of lung issues after surgery. If you have diabetes, make sure you are following your diet, taking medication if prescribed, and doing your exercises to maintain your blood sugar below 180. If your blood sugar is higher, contact your primary care provider as elevated blood sugar increases your risk of an infection. A healthy diet helps your body to heal after surgery. To prevent pneumonia, continue to use your incentive spirometer at home. Do 10 repetitions four to five times a day. Walking is very important as you recover. Balance rest and activity, planning for short rest periods during the day. Take a short walk every hour while awake. If you feel dizzy when you first get up, sit for a few minutes before walking. Make sure you increase the distance each day as you gain more strength in your leg. If you need to climb stairs, go up with the good and down with the bad, the surgical leg. You may climb stairs with the support of your coach. If your bedroom is upstairs, try to go up at night and come down in the morning, and then increase the amount of stair climbing as you feel stronger. 
When sitting, use chairs that have arms, backs, and firm seats. Be cautious of low toilets or low chairs. When reaching for items and getting dressed, use your long-handled reacher if you have one and be cautious when bending over to pick up objects. Dress your surgery leg first. By all means, be careful while you are recovering. Your motivation to participate in your home exercise program is a vital element to the speed and success of your recovery. You should do your exercises three to four times every day. Complete 10 repetitions of each exercise. Continue to use your walker or crutches and follow any weight-bearing restrictions until you see your surgeon for follow-up or follow your therapist's recommendations so that you will get the best results from your joint replacement surgery. To prepare for the ride home, be sure that the front passenger seat is moved back as far as possible. A pillow and a plastic bag on the seat can make it easier to get into the car. If you have a long drive, you will need to stop after about 45 minutes to get out and move around to decrease stiffness. Your surgeon will instruct you on when you are ready to drive after surgery. Back up as close as you can to the front seat with your walker or crutches. Tuck your head down and place your hands on the back of the car seat for support as you sit. Slowly swivel your body around. Only use your non-surgical leg to push up and back onto the seat. Your caregiver can help as needed. For comfort, you can place a pillow between your knees. When you get home, you may experience a period of time when your pain seems to be worse than it was in the hospital. This is a normal phase when some of the medications given to you in surgery are wearing off. Try to write down when you take your pain medicine to be sure you are following the guidelines. And remember that short walks every hour can actually help you to feel better. As to the swelling and bruising, it may increase more at home before it starts to get better, and that is normal too. If you want to improve the swelling in your leg, you need to lie back and elevate the leg above the level of your heart. You can't do that sitting in a chair with your leg on a footstool. Limit sitting to about 45 to 60 minutes at a time. These are all normal issues, even constipation, that you may experience and are part of the green zone. There are times where you may need to call your surgeon and report symptoms that are not normal. That is part of the yellow or caution zone. A fever above 101, increasing redness around an incision, foul smelling drainage are symptoms of an infection that should be reported right away. If you have concerns about a blood clot such as calf pain or increasing swelling and redness, call your surgeon so that they can identify whether you should be scheduled for an ultrasound test to look for blood clots. Your home health providers and the nurse navigator at St. Mary's are also available to help you determine if your symptoms, such as bruising, are normal or should be evaluated. Sometimes when you have surgery, other medical conditions may need to be addressed. This is part of the yellow caution zone. Please call your primary care doctor if you have concerns about conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, asthma or breathing issues, congestive heart failure, atrial fibrillation. There are situations where the case managers at the hospital may help set up appointments for you so that your primary care doctor can see you after discharge. We do that as an extra precaution to be sure that all of your health care needs are addressed in a timely fashion. There are rare occasions where you need medical attention right away. That's the red zone and requires you to stop and get immediate care. If you experience shortness of breath, chest pain, localized chest pain when you cough or deep breathe, it is time to call 911 and get the medical attention that you need. This concludes the information in our video. If you have completed your therapy and the doctor gives you the green light to go home, your nurse will review discharge instructions from your surgeon. When you get home, continue to refer to the information in your patient notebook and the discharge instructions for guidance throughout your recovery. Thank you for choosing to have your surgery at St. Mary's. It was a pleasure caring for you. 
and we hope you have received compassionate care and your experience was positive. Best wishes during your recovery.